Hi guys and welcome back to my channel and in today's video I am showing you how you can create fur using an embossing tool because embossing tools are amazing for creating fur details. As always I have a full list of all the products, equipment and materials down below should you want to check any of that out but anyway let's get on with today's video. So I am just using one embossing tool for this demonstration but I actually have three different sizes that I use quite often but for the purpose of this video I am just using the smallest size today. So embossing tools are great because they have a small little ball on the end of them and you can use them to gently indent the paper so that you can preserve that white grain for your really white areas such as small fur details, whiskers or any areas that you don't don't want to colour in with pencils. I am just using the smallest size embossing tool today because fur strands and whiskers are quite fine so you don't really want to be using a large embossing tool that has a large ball on the end because that will create larger lines. So I have just drawn out a circle on the paper and I'm going to be drawing in some fur texture within that circle but before I go in with any coloured pencils it is time to let that embossing tool work its magic. So I am using the embossing tool very gently. I am not applying a very hard pressure to the paper because it doesn't take a lot of pressure to indent the paper. I'm also using stroking motions really and I'm just mapping out the general fur strokes and direction of fur. I am just using a reference photo for the purpose of this tutorial as well and I'm using a reference photo just because I really want to pay attention to the type of fur that I am drawing, the direction of the fur and the general fur growth of the animal but this is just for a little bit of fun as well so I'm not following exactly what is in the reference photo. So I am just showing a more up close shot now of the embossing tool in action and I'm holding the embossing tool near the tip. So the reason why my hand is in this position is so that I can have more control over the embossing tool and where it is going. If I had my hand further up the embossing tool it would be harder to control where I indent the paper. So this just helps me to be quite precise with where I am indenting that paper and I also like to take my time with the embossing tool as well and that's just to make sure that I am indenting the paper accurately and following the reference photo. So after you have used the embossing tool you should expect to see something like this. You can now see the lines where I've indented the paper and you will see as we go through the tutorial just how amazing embossing tools are for preserving your paper. Now for this demonstration I am drawing gingery brown fur. So I've just picked out four colours from my Karen Darch Luminance range and I've picked four colours within the light, mid and dark tones. That is very important when drawing fur. You want to make sure that you have the variation of tones. So start with the light tones and work your way up to the dark tones. So the pencil I am using now is the Burnt Ochre 10% which is a very light peachy and beige colour and this colour is going to act as my lightest layer. So all I am doing here is gently shading in the circle so where the fur is and I'm shading in the colour just to get some saturation onto the paper. So hopefully you can see where I use the embossing tool. Those areas are staying white so they aren't being filled in by that pencil. I am going to be building up lots of layers of coloured pencil around the preserved areas to give the illusion of fur growth and some white fur strands showing through. I'm starting with a very light tone because light tones allow us to build up on layers and I also like to add some layers of pencil down to add depth and tone to a drawing but also because you do want to have a balance between the light and dark values in your drawing. Another reason why I start with lighter tones is because it is really hard, almost impossible to add light tones over dark tones. So for example if I was going in with a really dark pencil right now and then I wanted to add some lighter tones in it's going to be really hard to do that as light pencil won't really show over a dark colour. So make sure that when you do start from light, move up to some mid-tone values and then add in some darker tones when you're ready to add in those final layers. Another point I just quickly wanted to make in regards to starting with lighter tones and layers is that lighter tones really helps a lot with blending. So that is why I use light colours as a base. 
Okay, so once I've applied a first initial layer of pencil down to the paper, I gently shade in another layer of pencil and what this does is add more value down to the paper and it just saturates that paper even more with pencil. It also helps to really make those white strands stand out even more. So if you were drawing whiskers for example, they will really start to stand out. I am now starting to use some mid-tone pencils and this pencil is either the Burnt Ochre or the Burnt Ochre 50%, I just can't remember which one it is, but it is darker than the Burnt Ochre 10% that we just used. So what I want to start doing now is add more value down to this section of fur using this pencil, but I'm avoiding those lines that I indented into the paper because they are acting like our highlights or wispy strands of fur. So again, I'm just lightly shading in some colour, but I am avoiding those areas. Now, just to talk a little bit about my hand position at this stage and also pencil pressure, which are both really important when using the embossing technique. Firstly, for my hand position, notice how I'm holding the pencil sort of midway down the pencil barrel. This means that I'm holding the pencil fairly loosely, so I don't have loads of control over that pencil. And as I'm holding it at about a halfway point, it is distributing pressure evenly. So the pencil pressure is not too hard and it's not too soft. It is still quite light and gentle and that means that we aren't going in with really hard pressure on the pencil and filling in the paper grain too much. I am gently shading in the pencil using the side of the pencil or holding the pencil at an angle and by doing this it just allows pencil to distribute evenly over the paper. I'm also looking back at my reference photo and just really trying to identify where my light and dark areas are. So for example, what sections of fur appear quite light, maybe they are light because of the sunlight, and also areas of fur that look like they are more shadowed. I am now starting to add in even more darker values, again I'm keeping the pencil pressure quite light and shading in areas using the side of the pencil and I'm also shading in one direction mainly so that the fur looks quite subtle. So to aid a bit with shading and blending I am softly sweeping the pencil across the page in circular motions. I find that circular motions help just to smoothen and soften everything out but again I'm going quite lightly so that I can keep adding in more pencil layers. So the embossing technique I feel works best for quite wispy and fine fur, particularly short haired animals, but you can definitely use this technique for animals with longer fur or wavy and curly hair, but it just takes a bit of practice. So I definitely would recommend that you do practice with this technique before you apply this technique to a drawing because it can take quite some time to really understand and grasp how to use an embossing tool. The last thing that you want to be doing is using an embossing tool on an area you didn't mean to use it because it can be a little bit tricky to hide those areas. So like I'm doing here, this is just a practice drawing and I find the best way to practice is by practicing on a scrap bit of paper and using a reference photo to study before because that way you can really concentrate on the technique rather than worry about completing a whole drawing using this technique before you're ready to. It is definitely one of my favourite techniques for preserving white areas because I find if you just try and colour in a section of fur first and then use a white pencil for fur details or whiskers after, it doesn't really work and those white areas look really muddied and faded. So these white lines really stand out and if you feel that they are standing out too much, you can always shade in some coloured pencil over the top just to merge them in better with the surrounding areas. Whereas it's hard to do this if you try and add the white lines in after. So finally I'm adding in my darkest values and I'm adding in the darkest values where I feel they need to go. So for example which areas look quite dark on the fur, where the shadows are, where there's a lot of contrast and I'm making sure to work around and in between the white lines so that they do keep those highlights as well. So I do feel that this is a really effective technique to use for white lines. I think I could have added in a few more indentations so that the fur doesn't look so sparse, but hopefully you get the general idea of how this technique works and how effective this is as well. The one thing I would just like to point out as I made this mistake before is not to use a solvent with this technique. If you use a solvent to blend out the fur, the solvent will spread the pencil pigment into all surrounding areas, including the grooves into the paper so you will lose the lines that you created with the embossing tool.
Instead, just keep working on your layers, keep building up your tones and you will start to see all of the fur coming together really nicely alongside the layers and the details that you have created. So we are just coming to the end of this tutorial now, but just to recap, if you are wanting to try this technique for yourself, then make sure that you add in all of your embossing lines first before you add in coloured pencils. When you add in your coloured pencils, you should start to see the white lines underneath your pencils. I really hope that you enjoyed this in-depth tutorial on how to use an embossing tool, but thank you guys so much for watching and I will look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye everyone!